Thus pondering, like a god, the Greek drew nigh. His dreadful plumage nodded from on high. The Pelian javelin in his better hand shot trembling rays that glittered o'er the land, and on his breast the beamy splendor shone like Jove's own lightning or the rising sun. As Hector sees, unusual terrors rise. Struck by some god, he fears, recedes, and flies. He leaves the gates, he leaves the wall behind. Achilles follows like the winged wind. Thus at the panting dove, a falcon flies, the swiftest racer of the liquid skies. Just when he holds, or thinks he holds his prey, obliquely wheeling through the aerial way, with open beak and shrilling cries he springs, and aims his claws, and shoots upon his wings. No less for foreright, the rapid chase they held, one urged by fury, one by fear impelled. Now circling round the walls their course maintain, where the high watchtower overlooks the plain. Now where the fig trees spread their umbrage broad, a wider compass smoke along the road. Next by Scamander's double source they bound, where two famed fountains burst the parted ground. This hot through scorching clefts is seen to rise, with exhalations steaming to the skies. That the green banks in summer's heat o'erflows, like crystal clear and cold as winter snows, each gushing font a marble cistern fills, whose polished bed receives the falling rills. Where Trojan dames, ere yet alarmed by Greece, washed their fair garments in the days of peace. By these they passed, one chasing one in flight, the mighty fled pursued by stronger might. Swift was the course, no vulgar prize they play, no vulgar victim must reward the day, such as in races crowned this, this speedy strife. The prize contended was great Hector's life, as when some hero's funerals are decreed in grateful honor of the mighty dead, where high rewards the vigorous youth inflame, some golden tripod or some lovely dame, the panting coursers swiftly turn the goal, and with them turns the raised spectator's soul. Th thus three times round the Trojan wall they fly, the gazing gods lean forward from the sky, to whom, while eager on the chase they look, the sire of mortals and immortals spoke. Unworthy sight! The man beloved of heaven, behold, in glorious round yon, yon city driven. My heart partakes the generous Hector's pain, Hector, whose zeal hold hecatombs had slain, whose grateful fumes the gods receive with joy from Ida's summits and the towers of Troy. Now see him flying, to his fears resigned, and fate and fierce Achilles close behind. Consult, ye powers, tis worthy your debate, whether to snatch him from impending fate, or let him bear by stern Pelides slain, good as he is, the lot imposed on man. Then Pallas thus, Shall he whose vengeance forms the forky bolt, and blackens heavens with storms, shall he prolong one Trojan's forfeit breath, a man, a mortal, preordained to death? And will no murmurs fill the courts above, no gods indignant blame their partial Jove? Go then, returned the sire, without delay, exert thy will, I give the fates their way. Swift at the mandate, pleased Tritonia flies, and stoops, impetuous, from the cleaving skies. As through the forest, o'er the vale and lawn, the well-breathed beagle drives the flying fawn, in vain he tries the covert of the brakes, or deep beneath the trembling thicket shakes. Sure of the vapor in the tainted dews, the certain hound his various maze pursues, thus step by step, where e'er the Trojan wheeled, there swift Achilles compassed round the field. Oft as to reach the Darden gates he bends, and hopes the assistance of his pitying friends, whose showering arrows, as he coursed below, from the high turrets must oppress the foe. So oft Achilles turns him to the plain, he eyes the city, but he eyes in vain. As men in slumber seem with speedy pace, one to pursue and one to lead the chase, their sinking limbs the fancied course forsake, nor can nor this can fly, nor that can overtake, nor less the laboring heroes pant and strain, where that but flies, and this pursues in vain. What god, O oh muse, assisted Hector's force, with fate itself so long to hold the course? Phoebus it was, who, in his latest hour, endued his knees with strength, his nerves with power.
in great Achilles, lest some Greeks advance, should snatch the glory from his lifted lance, sign to the troops to yield his foes flow the way, and leave untouched the honors of the day. Jove lifts the golden balances that show the fates of mortal men and things below. Here each contending hero's lot he tries and weighs with equal hand their destinies. Lo, sinks the scale surcharged with Hector's fate, heavy with death it sinks, and hell receives the weight. Then Phoebus left him. Fierce Minerva flies to stern Pelides and triumphing cries, O loved of Jove, this day our labors cease, and conquest blazes with full beams on Greece. Great Hector falls, that Hector famed so far, drunk with renown, insatiable of war, falls by thy hand and mine, nor force nor flight shall more avail him, nor his god of light. See, where in vain he supplicates above, rolled at the feet of unrelenting Jove. Rest here, myself will lead the Trojan on, and urge to meet the fate he cannot shun. Her voice divine, the chief with joyful mind obeyed, and rested on his lands reclined, where like Deiphobus, while like Deiphobus, the martial dame, her face, her gesture, and her arms the same, in show of an aid by hapless Hector's side, approached, and greets him thus with voice belied. Too long, O Hector, have I borne the sight of this distress and sorrow in thy flight. It fits us now a noble stand to make, and here as brothers equal fates partake. Then he, O prince, allied in blood and fame, dearer than all that own a brother's name, of all that Hecuba to Priam bore, long tried, long loved, much loved, but honored more. Since you, of all our numerous race alone, defend my life, regardless of your own. Again, the goddess, much my father's prayer and much my mother's pressed me to forbear. My friends embraced my knees, adjured my stay, but stronger love impelled, and I obey. Come then, the glorious conflict let us try. Let the steel sparkle and the javelin fly, or let us stretch Achilles on the field, or to his arm our tr bloody trophies yield. Fraudful, she said, then swiftly march before. The Darden hero shuns his foe no more. Sternly they met. The silence Hector broke. His dreadful plumage nodded as he spoke.